We're at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center. This is actually part of the factory that has been modified in order to accommodate even more F-150 Lightning. Sandy Monroe from Monroe Live and I walked through the F-150 Lightning assembly line together. Sandy is an expert on automotive manufacturing and I learned a lot about the production of Ford's first all-electric full-size pickup truck. Okay, so this is called staging. And in essence, what happens is up there, they get painted then you get a cure time, then you bring them down here and they go over to this part. Now this is where you're going to do a marriage for the body to the AGV. And now what you can do is, that's the deck lid, but anyways, now what you can do is you can start to um, build up the interior usually. Then once this is done, you'd pick that up and drop it on the, um, onto the rolling chassis, which is over there. So this is kind of interesting for me, and it looks like looks like there's a lot of people drifting around here that don't know what they're doing. Extra That's different perfect. because uh, you used to work for Ford, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I can speak Ford. <laughs> so what's going on here? Okay, so they, back there, dropped the, uh, dropped the, the main harness in. So um, this is pretty nice, actually. Um, they've got cages and whatnot to put things in place so that it's easy for the operator to, to make things happen. This, um, this is kind of like one of the very first things. You, well, you put the mat on first, obviously. That's, a, that's called a dash mat, and it's uh, just for sound Insulation. deadening. Yeah. So let's see how, uh, how quickly they can uh, move. Now this thing is going to be... Huh. I wonder why this is. There's no reason to put um, foil up. Anyways, these EGVs is what I really like to build cars on. It makes it easy for the operators, especially with a mat oh, on the yeah. floor. Oh yeah. They, they move them through the whole factory, right? Uh, yeah, until you get to marriage. Then they'll go and sit on top of the rolling chassis. <clears throat> these are kind of cool. These are uh, the way you, uh, you bring uh, the HVAC side, uh, line ah. side. So they come in looking like that. And as you take the stuff off, strip it off, you pop it up and then more stuff appears for the operators. But that's a little low. But anyway, this is how you can bring the stock in without having it get damaged. There you are. And I see we got weather seal right here. These are, yes, that's for around, around the doors. The doors? Yeah, so that'll be going on here, <clears throat> in and around here. Mm -hmm. And one thing I noticed is um, this uh, wiring is different in different places. They use different kind of wrapping. I have no clue why. But this is a this is the same thing as what um, the the guys at Tesla are doing. They're using exactly the same kind of uh, uh, conveyance system for their uh, for their uh, the, final at build the, um, at, in Austin. Yeah, you can make this go up and down. So if you've got you know some short person here, versus a you or a me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just waddle over here. But anyway, uh, yeah. So the best thing you can do is make it so that the operators don't have to go; their arms don't go above their shoulders. Um, that's why. It, it causes heart attacks. That's why uh, beauticians and barbers usually die of heart attacks because their hands are over their shoulders a lot. So we do, or at least when I do uh, a line, that's what I try and I do. So what they've done here is they oh, uh, yeah, popped the in the accelerator and uh, yeah, the, and you've got the, the brake system. And these are all electric brakes now. And you know, here's something else I don't understand. My kitty, what is that? So this one's plastic and this is steel. That's a mystery. Yeah, maybe we can take some money out of this. Or wait, anyways. <clears throat> oh, now this, we have the interior parts, the components for the infotainment yeah. and the steering wheel and the dash. Well, they dropped the instrument panel in. So somewhere around here, there would be uh, right over here. So this this thing right here 
this will come forward and then they'll grab it and then they can just shove it straight in through that door and put it up and then there'll be probably a few bolts like right here so in through these uh, the casting here I think this is cast magnesium and the reason that you'd use that is because it's light and it also is good for vibration if you get into a crash um, I'd rather be banging into magnesium than almost anything else and so that means that they've got the uh, the instrument panel is buttoned right down and the body build is near perfect these are called idle stations you don't want to have anybody working in the aisle so these are just to fill it up to make sure that you have a buffer so this is your rolling chassis build up oh, yeah. over here right here yeah so uh, these two are going to come together shortly up there somewhere that's interesting this will be glass with um, with uh, um, FR, uh, uh, fire retardant inside, so that if something does catch on fire, it'll it's be contained. contained. But even better is that the body, of course, now is gonna go over the top of this, and it'll be made out of steel. So even if there was a battery fire here, the steel would block it from getting it into the compartment. Oh, maybe that's mine. They're just driving it over. <laughs> Here's a casting that you can write home about. That's uh, got to be one of the biggest um, rear castings I've ever seen. In fact, I think it is, for a, for a pickup truck anyway. It looks more like what you'd find in a tank. <laughs> a lot more power cable than I was expecting to see, but, but this is uh, pretty good. The only thing that I really, really liked on the um, on the Volkswagen was they had uh, all their power lines went in one one direction right in the center right down the spine this one's got stuff on both sides but it's hard to, I I mean until I see what the architecture would look like or until I take it apart and when I <laughs> foresaw how it was going to go together then I I could make a comment the other thing that's going to be you know unique here is that they're running it at a really low rate so everybody gets used to getting the job done and so uh, there's big gaps between where things are done. And it looks like they've got the handles going in here. Yeah. So um, Interior. this is what's called um, uh, stick build glass. And um, I'm not really a fan. I don't, I don't like this method. Um, I Why prefer to see a module because I can test it before I put it in. So you're going to see that they're putting in the controls and whatnot here. Mm -hmm. And then over here, they're going to be putting in uh, regulators and stuff <laughs> and the glass. And the glass goes in uh, here. Yep. So um, it's on this side and not on the other side. Or is it? No, I think it's on the other oh, side. Oh, it is on both sides. So. Um, to do this, what you have to do is um, you have to fit everything through these holes. Mm -hmm. All the connections and everything have to be done in these big giant holes. And um, the other way is you just take the module and you go push it in, push it forward and do up a couple of bolts and you're all done. So I, this one's going to require two or three stations on the assembly line. That's kind of expensive. This is the most expensive part of the of the whole factory Process. is uh, is uh, um, final. Usually, you put the console in first, and they, they've got they've made a lot of connections here now. So you put the console in first, and then the seats are going to come in from either side, and uh, but not until the interior trim is on. We just photobombed Jim Farley's interview. <laughs> They'll get over it. <laughs> wow, so this machine helps. This machine kind of glues everything together because these things, yeah, they are together, but they're not really. So you can see it's, it's held in the front and held in the rear. That's got bow ties. And this has got a clamp that goes into the, uh, into the 
bed. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, the bed. So now, the thing I wanted to show you is right here. It don't work. So this thing here is going to come out. Mm -hmm. It's going to go in here. That's going to come overhead, and it's going to drop right on top of that thing. Bolt. Now people know where the 12 volt is. People always ask that with EVs. It's marvelous though to see all of the bits and pieces here that uh, that have to go in place and how everything has to go together and whatnot so that you can just drop the body on top and everything's ready to rock. Are you gonna tear up a lightning? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, we are. Should be able to do at least 150,000 here. Maybe they're uh, understating as well, so. So as far as I understand it, this machine here, it swings this arm around when an F-150 Lightning is up on this uh, ramp. And what it does is it takes this back end and puts pressure right on the truck bed so that it calibrates the onboard scales so that it has an accurate reading and it's calibrated when it goes to customers so they can see what their payload is so all these little pieces hanging off the side of it are sensors or something like that that are detecting uh, they may be but normally it's uh, eyeballs that uh, that get the job done here see uh, okay so now I know what those sensors are for they're for gaps this is not the place that I'd want to find that I'd want to <laughs> find that way down the line but, uh, but if they're sensing gaps here, then those scanners are lasers. They'll go in, they'll check the, uh, the gap around the uh, car and make sure that everything is right where it's supposed to be. <laughs> you you want to be in the micron kind of area if you can. That'd be more of the same. So there you go. It's cool, they have charging stations installed right at the Sorry? end of the line. What was that? They have charging stations installed right at the end of the line to, yeah, to get I'm, them all charged up before they head I'm, out. I'm pretty sure that uh, they'd be pretty close to being fully charged by the time they get to there because anyway, yeah. it would take too long. Well, that's all for this video. Special thanks to Sandy for his insights and in walking me through the Ford Rouge EV Center. I appreciate you all watching and don't forget to share and subscribe for more videos like this. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric. <laughs>